Welcome. My name is Craig McMillan. I'm the technical program manager for Vineyard Team, and this is Steel in the Field. This is one of our tailgate meetings where we have farmers come together for grower to grower interactions to talk about what works, what doesn't work, and how to improve upon their farming practices in the interest of farming in a more sustainable fashion. The game plan for today, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about one of uh, the projects we recently completed at Vineyard Team. And then uh, Chad Tabor, our host, is right over there. There you go. He's going to talk about the pieces of equipment that uh, Mesa Vineyard Management has been nice enough to collect for us here at Double Black Ranch, Castro's Double Black Vineyard. Um, then I'll introduce a couple of folks that have also brought pieces of equipment. We've got Thomas Clemens here today with the Clemens Weed Knife. And we have Nick Valdez and um, Keith Kirkland, who have the Kirkland uh, cultivator right there. That's pretty cool. Then we're going to play. <laughs> Try stuff out, look at it, literally kick the dirt clods. Right, seriously, let's, you know, it's a, it's a sandbox. You know, let's, do, let's check it out. That's the whole point. And this is a little bit different also because we don't have the kinds of experts you know we may be used to. I don't have somebody from UC Davis, I don't have somebody from Cal Poly, I, I don't have some, somebody from Bioag research or resource, bio resources and ag engineering. You're the experts. Share knowledge, talk about it, compare notes. The name Steel in the Field came from a book that was published by um, Sustainable Ag uh, Network, which is part of the uh, UC, USDA SARE program. And the point of the book was when commercial herbicides came out, people stopped cultivating. Prior to that, that's what you did. Then we stopped. So there are all these pieces of equipment sitting in yards all over the place getting rusty. And nobody knows what they are, how they work, or what they're intended to do. And then people came around and said, hey, I don't want to use herbicides anymore or as much. And we lost all that knowledge. We lost all that experience because we weren't doing it and we weren't sharing it. And so now what we need to do is we need to get together, we need to put our heads together and say, hey, what works, what doesn't, it works great on this soil, doesn't work so great on that soil, worked for me, didn't work for me, how did it work, oh, et cetera. So share that knowledge and talk about stuff. And it's not just about eliminating herbicides completely. Here, it's an organic vineyard. And so yes, we have no synthetic uh, herbicides going on. You gotta use something else, cultivation uh, is what folks are doing. But you may be interested in in-row cultivation for other reasons. Um, Bob Thomas, who is the actual vineyard manager here at this ranch, and I were talking earlier, and he said, you know, cultivation is great for disrupting uh, the ants, the Argentine ants. So if you have a mealybug problem, you might consider cultivation as a cultural practice to disrupt the ant colonies. So you get a two-for-one. Right? Now, that's integrated pest management. Um, let me introduce our next uh, speaker. That's Chad Tabor. Um, and your title is assistant vineyard manager. Is that assistant vineyard manager. Assistant vineyard manager. Um, he's with Mesa Vineyard Management. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chad. Uh, I work for Mesa Vineyards. I'm one of the assistant vineyard managers out in Shandon. And so we're going to go through a couple of pieces of these equipments. Um, I'm by no means the expert on either one of these. As Craig said, I kind of suggested this as something that I could learn from. So I might consult uh, some of these guys that are really the, the experts on these. So let's start here. With the Gearmore Speed Evader, uh, the guys that are using this the most, they said they really like to use this on more uh, terraces and things. This is only one-sided. It's hydraulic. And these guys, I'm, I'm not sure if this is more for kind of cleaning up the berm or smoothing it out, but it's got actual metal underneath it that will get in there, chew up under the vine and this will articulate going up and down so it's not just for uh, flack around. So that's the, the Gearmore Speed Evader, and maybe uh, anyone that has any comments on, on this guy is welcome to speak up, and if you have any questions, we have certainly enough folks here that have experience with this. One thing 
we do use out in Shannon is the Bezaridi. And this is a really simple piece of equipment that's been around longer than I think I've been alive. Uh, you have you have these these springs that are just the front gives you a little bit more give, and this is going under the vine and cutting or just pushing weeds out of the way. We'll go through, do this. You might use this in combination with knocking down your berms and then you might use a border disc that we'll see later to build your berms back up. So we've got a little chisel that's right in the front here too to kind of break up some of that harder ground so you're not busting things up here. And I think maintaining this equipment in my, this is the hardest thing. You're moving dirt with, a, with metal that's meant to give. So normally this will be a little bit further out. This came from one of the other vineyards. But this would make it underneath and hit this and kind of come halfway into the row. It's, it's just like leaf springs. Yeah. So the, the front springs are a bit, little bit lighter. Um, and they're on a bit of an angle, so they're still sloping off. But we'll even go, we'll even go further into the vine. I couldn't say that it's not going to damage it at all. Uh, you would probably want it on more mature system or more mature vines or where you have stakes everywhere. But yeah, it's, it's scraping up against the vine. So if, if crown gall may be an issue in your vineyard, it might be something to consider. You're making a wound possibly, but if you have heavier trunks, it might not be such a concern. But definitely uh, one of the tools in the toolbox. And these are all things that you might use in combination together. This is something that you might be breaking down your berms, breaking down your berms, and, and then you're going to have something that you're going to have to build your berms back up, especially if you're just using that for your primary weed control. Talking to some of these guys um, that are farming these castoral vineyards, that's one thing that they're really trying to do is after they break it down, they're building that berm back up and they're also kind of mixing soil as, as they're doing all these cultivation activities. And before I skip over probably one of the cooler things is the, the weed burner here. Propane weed burner. They're going through, I would say, I think Kyle mentioned to me maybe two miles an hour or so, and they're they're going through and they're not necessarily burning burning but they're trying to burst cells and go through the vineyard fairly quickly on really seedlings uh, kind of cotyledon stage like just really young immature plants and they may not get full control on something that's a really well established weed but it's another tool that they use and they can also get out there with a four-wheeler in something that's um, on, on a day where it rains you might be able to get out there and, and do some work and just kind of keep going and, and if you're a, just an organic uh, farm that might be that might be something that you really need to do and, and keep moving so this is another tool that they have and that doesn't really require a large piece of equipment or a, a really large investment. But I was told by Bob that maybe you need a burn permit to use it. So that's another tool. And let's come over here to uh, the berm sweeper. We use these primarily to kind of save a little bit on, um, on labor for bringing canes from underneath the vine to the row middle so we can either disc them in or shred them. But one thing that we kind of, we're using them for out in Shannon right now is we're going before our herbicide rigs and cleaning up that berm and even kind of removing some skeletons where maybe we'd let things go uh, further than we wanted. So 
This is a, a really great tool that we have even going before our herbicides and also saving on labor. And I think as we kind of struggle with trying to get people out in the vineyard and, and paying them hourly, this is going to be a tool that I'm trying to suggest to some of the other vineyards that we farm to, to purchase and, and try to incorporate into their program. But a, a good tool that I hadn't seen a lot of um, in previous farms that I had worked on, but I was really impressed with its results. And this gentleman is probably the best person to speak about this, so I'm actually going to hand him the microphone to talk about the Clemens weed knife. We, uh, we have these in our system. This is Bob's here. Uh, they're developing, have developed something else that, that we demoed the other day out in Shandon that was, uh, it was pretty cool to see and maybe he can talk a little bit about that piece of equipment that's not here yet today. My name is Thomas Clements. I'm running Clements Vineyard Equipment. We are located in Woodland, close to Sacramento. And our main company is based uh, out of Germany. I think most of you know our underlying weeder. We call it Radius. Uh, here it's mounted on uh, a cultivator frame called Hexagon uh, that can be used as a tool carrier or as a cultivator. We can mount chains in between. You can have a three point in the back to combine uh, mowing at the same time if you want to mow down the cover crop. The main weeder. Um, we have different length of shears and blades and the sensor bar is a single acting hydraulic system that means we just use hydraulic power to bring the blade back in the working position and the pressure of the soil and the spring system inside as soon as we hit the vine will bring the blade back so we can go around the vine. That allows us a speed up to six, seven miles per hour if your vineyard allows to drive so fast. Um, you spoke about uh, hillside and angle and all that. All that is possible uh, uh, with our unit. It's uh, universal. That means we can put an angle adjuster in here, mechanical or hydraulic, so we can angle the plate to the slope we are uh, facing. We have different kind of frames manual adjustment, hydraulic adjustment in width, all different uh, um, row uh, spaces starting from 5 feet up to 12 feet as possible. Uh, Chet was uh, talking about a system we uh, have released already two years uh, ago in, in Europe. I'm always hesitating to bring this stuff over here because Europe is different. Uh, we have farms there. A 50 acre farm is a big one. So uh, some of this equipment is not um, made for your surface over here. So I try to wait a little bit till these horns are a little bit round in, in Europe and then I bring the equipment over here and we try it. And I've tried this little tiller. We have a little tiller above the blade so we just take the uh, amount of soil that we have undercut with the blade and steer it up. Especially if you have cra grass sods that are uh, sometimes difficult to turn over, even if we have mounted the clod breakers on here. Um, and it, it does a great job. It does it. I think it was a little bit wet over there when you did the demo and you had very high weeds. It was a little wet, but it still did a good job, yeah. especially kind of later in the morning. Yeah. But we still had some rains before. So none of these uh, uh, solutions you see here are miracle makers. You have to integrate uh, uh, this system into your management plan. So in general, <coughs> over the thumb, the rule is after harvest, when it's still dry, you have a pass and then leave it for the winter. And then you try to get in there as soon as possible in springtime when the weeds start growing again. And then you need uh, another pass, uh, possibly in, uh, in early summer. That's the general rule three times per year. Sometimes you have to go more often, that's for sure. Uh, just to, to let you know, um, to build up a berm, we have the disc solution too, that can be mounted on the same frame uh, or on a separate frame. 
and we have possibilities to break the berm down with little uh, tools that can be mounted to the blade uh, to bring the berm down in one pass. Any questions you have, uh, I'm here with our partner Coastal uh, Tractor. Mike and uh, Felix are here. We have another tractor over there uh, also with uh, the same equipment. So uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate. We are here. Thank you. But let's move on to our Perfecta. The Perfecta is something that we kind of use uh, in, inside the wheel row to break up. It seems like a lot of people use it for a, a bit of weed control, not just uh, to break up and, and disc the soil under. With the rollers on the back, I don't know that all Perfectas have rollers, or some people even choose to take them off. I don't know if that's a preference of just kind of speed or, or maybe they have some rocky terrain. Um, but another tool that we have, maybe someone can speak a little bit more on that as well. Right across here, Martin brought this beauty in. So this is the l &H French Plow. Fritz had the guys resurrect this guy a little bit this year to uh, clean up some of our terrace hills that that we had planted a cover crop solid through the whole thing and we wanted to kind of eliminate that competition uh, from some of the I think uh, barley or so that was growing in the vine middles without going up there and spraying and and we use this so it has a French plow on here as well but kind of a, a cool piece of equipment it has a sensor bar here where you can, uh, you only need one person to, to operate this guy. Pretty cool. It was something I really wanted to bring out here and show everybody if they had never seen one before. See this guy cultivating under the vine and your French, French plow working uh, alongside, you know, building your, or, you know, pulling away from the, the berm. But something that I had never seen before and I hope some of these guys can talk more about that too as we can do a little discussion. No, I don't know what Bob did this with, so quarter disc, it's over there. Just the board, board just threw it back. Okay. And Bob, you use, you use this in your, in your program? Not, not that particular one, but I have one and uh, I actually grew up using those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the McCarthy days when they had the two row harvesters. They were more than a harvester, it was a tractor. They'd have six of these on there. Do uh, two full rows and two half rows at one time. Six of those all working at once going down the row. Yeah, because yeah, this is just doing one side of one row. So that plow is fixed. This plow moves back and forth based on the sensor and, and it just finds its way around the line. You can put goes. you can put a left and right hand on there you can do and two. Do, do two yeah. at once with yeah, this they tractor. Make, they make Miriam. <laughs> it's but. very aggressive. If you've got a uh, heavy weed population and a big berm, mm -hmm. that'll take it all out in one pass. It's moving, it's moving a lot of dirt. It's probably moving more dirt than any of these other yeah. in-row tools, for sure. Is it hard on stakes? Not really. No. 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 And if you got it set up and adjusted set, right... Set up the hydraulic... It, 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 it's hydraulically actuated. It comes out. It doesn't fly back. It goes back easily. There's another attachment you can put on the back back here it's a couple of fingers that flip the dirt off from right around the base of the stake and no i mean this is a this is i don't know bob 1940s 1950s technology i didn't use it that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it, but I've, I've seen them that old so i mean i, I know they're it's from that type of an era because i just sent mine that's over right to Selma where they're made to get it rebuilt yeah so and they're they're the brand new one looks no different than that one that one's probably 1970s or, or something yeah. so they, they changed that back piece in about 75 it used to be okay. a flat piece this one. yeah okay i remember when they did that yeah. it's yeah. a great year yeah <laughs> but would you use this in combination with the border disc building your berms back up and then you, you, yeah. you, you actually have to because that'll take it down two three inches below vineyard floor surface what we used to do when we were flood irrigating yeah. is you'd go under there 
and then you'd irrigate down there. Flood right down Both the vine. Sides, it would make a nice open furrow right yeah. under the vine, and then you'd yeah. throw back with a border disc like this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're going to yeah. demonstrate that here today? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because that 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 chunk of pipe on there that's representing the sensor bar is not the right is not the right <laughs> piece. So we got to get the right piece well, on there. If it's not the here today, if, it were, I would. if it's not the right angle, it's not going to work right. Well, that's I farm here, but uh, on the west side, the mine's being rebuilt. So let's let's move down the road, check something else out. So we'll look next at the Palenk uh, sunflower and. Possibly a little bit more aggressive tool. Um, I think uh, Kyle was mentioning to me that uh, they have to move fairly slow with this. Kyle, can you comment on kind of miles per hour that you guys are going? Uh, two or less than two miles per hour for, for this guy. But another tool uh, that they use, you don't have kind of the articulation that you would, but you can certainly adjust, but just under the row cultivation that you can do two rows at once, or one full row. So another, another thing that's running off hydraulics, but another tool in the toolbox that's doing your under the row cultivation. And it looks like it's got some hydraulics that you can move in and out for your different row spacings. Um, so something that you can interchange between you know, if you were six to nine foot spacings, depending on, you know, what you guys have out there. We're working with things that are anywhere from five to 12 out in Shandon. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a challenge to, to use something like this in the, in the whole system, but certainly something that really fits um, in their program for Castoro. And right next to us, you have the Schmeiser um, spring tooth, similar to the Perfecta, no ring roller on the back. Uh, a real simple tool where you're chiseling, breaking up some kind of hard compaction in there, maybe before you could do some seeding, getting in, in there with this guy. And then just connected to us over here, we have a disc. We wanted to bring, we wanted to bring everything out here uh, so anybody could see things, but the disc I think is fairly self-explanatory. You'll see one thing I learned is everyone's got a different way to adjust that disc. And all those guys out in the field that are really uh, kind of our experts on using these for nine to 10 hours a day, they're gonna tell you the way they think it's done best and I tend to listen to the people that'll do it for 10 hours a day. So let's, uh, let's go and take a look at this implement that we have on the trailer over here. And these guys can speak about it a little bit. And something that I have never seen before, but Bob mentioned that he has used it 20 years ago or something very similar to it. I think this is a, a slight variation on on a tool that's been used for years. My name is Nick Valdez and I'm helping represent the Kirkland Wheat Knife. All these other tools that you've seen here is one of the greatest things for our part. But what the reason we designed this tool, it's not a plow or anything, it's a maintenance tool. That you can come back after working with these tools that you can come in and control the wheat problem in the middle. I have mine mounted on, on a tractor and my rows are 12 foot wide. So I, when I want to work the berms, I got to make two passes. And I, with my tractor, I can stay about three inches away from the, from the vines. And it works real nice for me and it really eliminates a lot of labor for me. I try not to do any spraying that I don't have to. But with this thing, the first year, I was the very first person that bought one. When it was designed, I loved it. I knew how it was going to work for my field, and it paid for itself a couple of times the first year. Uh, in fact, the guys that usually have come in to cut the weeds, we, they didn't get enough time in because they did 21 acres in almost three days. 
so they went through pretty fast. But uh, after you, they've dissed and everything, uh, just like those rows look right there in the middle, that's how my rows look at home too. I run my disc, and then I run my perfecto tool, and that leaves it perfect for me. Because I can run through with this piece of tool here, I can run from seven to nine miles an hour, whatever allows me the, the way the field is and stuff. I have different, different uh, angles and stuff there, so I, sometimes I have to slow down a little bit more, but this thing it was designed, it loves speed. It really does love speed, and it only goes down about two inches, so you preserve a lot of moisture in your field. I have two blocks that are completely, um, they're head pruned. Well, all my stuff is head pruned, but they're dry farmed completely. And so I'm able to go at an angle or long ways, and all I do is remove one or two blades. Uh, as it sits right here, it is seven foot nine inches wide. And every time you take off one blade, you take off exactly one foot. But it doesn't mean that if you have a specialty, we can probably design one where the, the blades are just a little bit longer or a little bit shorter to, to fit your vineyard. But as this one sits right here, it, it is seven foot nine inches wide. Again, it loves speed. Um, I didn't know what we were gonna be up against over here, what kind of terrain or, or how wide the rows were, but uh, uh, I'll be more than glad to give anybody my card and I'll be more glad to give anybody a private demonstration on our ranch and they can see what, how we've been using it and what it's done for us. Again, and you, can, you can save yourself a lot of money in chemicals, that's for sure. But that's what I have. My name is Grant Kramers. I'm a general manager at Delicato Family Vineyards. What is your primary method of weed control? Uh, currently, we're a post-emergent herbicide program. We're moving towards tillage, under the vine tillage. What post-emergent herbicides are part of that program? Uh, mostly Roundup and Mufosinate. What types of cultivation are you looking at for weed control? So we're looking at like the Clemens, where it's an under the vine knife, or Bezzaretti's, where it's just the old-fashioned mechanical um, tillage. From what you saw here today, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of in-row cultivation for weed control? So I think the advantages of in, of in-row cultivation, mechanical weed control, especially up in the area where we farm, is you don't you're not dealing with the wind. Um, it gets windy at ten, starts to get windy at ten o'clock in the morning. By eleven o'clock, you're shut down. So that means your guys are coming really early to do weed control, and so this gives you a chance to go all day. Uh, you're also less concerned on some of the younger vineyards and so forth of any drift. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, I think the more you can move away from herbicides and that cycle, you're still going to have use for herbicides. Even in our tillage stuff, we still use herbicides occasionally, but you're just breaking that cycle and hopefully not establishing those uh, herbicide resistant weeds like we have done in the past from our practices. What concerns do you have about going to cultivation? Uh, I don't. I've, I've used cultivation. Uh, I was exclusively cultivation at a previous job, and so I've, I'm very comfortable with it. What implement did you use at that job? That was mostly Clemens. Uh, ad adapted with our own uh, kind of impl adapted into our own implements and Bezzaretti's, Lilliston, and so forth. What's your favorite implement? My favorite is probably the uh, Clemens, but the Old Faithful is the Bezzaretti. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. Spend too much money on hand labor. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here today. My CFO slash my wife uh, convinced her that we need to get into some sort of mechanical device and this was a perfect time to let her see it. So she was able to see some of it and uh, understand the benefits of it. Uh, we're spending three to four grand a year on the hand labor just to keep our berms clean. I do everything else in the cover crops and uh, rototill, disc, mow, whatever in the, in the middle. So this was a perfect uh, time to come see this operation. So. Uh, have you used herbicides in the past? We have not. And why not? Uh, we want to keep as clean and organic as we can. We use no herbicides or pesticides at all. Are you uh, certified? Somebody check We are not. We are still, uh, we're in our fourth leaf right now, so we're in the process of getting all that set up. A little bit of a side detour. Uh, do you have a plan for um, uh, powdery mildew control once the vines are getting over that time? Uh, we've talked about a couple different versions. We don't have anything committed yet, so. Not yet. We have more powdered mildew topics in the future. So. All right, it's something we need to. That and red blotch, uh, you know, obviously that's something else that's 
uh, on the horizon that all of us have to face. So, um, Based on what you saw today, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cultivation for you? Uh, well, advantages, of course, is competition with the vines, uh, reducing that competition. Uh, it's a cleaner, easier to take care of vineyard when the, everything's cleaned up underneath the berm. Uh, easier on the workers to move through. Uh, timing of the mowing for us and the tilling and such. Uh, I, I think it all is just part of an overall program that you've got to do to maintain a healthy vineyard. Paul Hoover, Stillwater Vineyards, the owner. Uh, we're a SIP certified program. Uh, what is your weed management program? What do you do for weed control? We use a combination of um, tillage um, and as little as possible spray. I would say three, four years ago, I thought I could go all non-herbicides. That's a little challenging in the early years. I think you have to get, uh, you have to work your way up to it. So what I would say is you can't just all of a sudden say, okay, I'm going all tillage. I mean, you can, but financially, it's pretty tough. And so where I'm at now is actually using some hand hoeing, kind of a vegetable grower program that, you know, if they look at us grape growers, they're like, well, occasionally you can just go through with crews and do a lot. So a combination of um, under the vine tillage with a weed knife, I use a weed knife, um, some sort of pre-emergent, properly timed in the years that I can time it to, to assist. So let's, let's call that my February pre-emergent. I'm still trying to get something down there that's a, that's a herbicide, so I'm not all the way. And then a lot of hand work that includes spot spraying where if we need to, to just go out and hand spot spray. And I'm having a lot of success in the overall management picture. And I think with weeds, the real key is you've got to have a kind of a eight year view or a six year view, you, there, there is no magic pill. And then I think the other thing with weeds is just very aggressive management on eliminating seeds as much as you can. So in other words, don't let things go to seed, don't let things go. And, and so, and, and then just understanding the weeds, a classic example I'll give as a, I wish I would have known, the July rain two years ago, an inch in July, I thought I had, you know, bull thistle under control or, or you know the, and, and yet it, it germinated it everywhere and so we were not ready and prepared let's say to go sp to spray for that so I think it's just a manager manage of constantly doing everything it's like today you know I learned a lot today I thought it was good I, I wasn't appreciating the covering concept of throwing some some get the berms covered which is actually a weed killing pass and that was good today I, I I wasn't thinking of that and the delay of that so we use a weed knife which knocks it down but go back three weeks later and throw it back over the top pretty cool thank you for watching steel in the field please visit our website for more videos podcasts fact sheets posters and other online courses thank you